Good morning and welcome to Employment Hour in 30. I'm John Scholes, your host, alongside Lior Sanfiru from Sanfiru to Mark and Law Firm. Back for another uh, weekend show, Lior. Let's get into it. A couple things you should know, employmenthourtv.ca, 1-855-821-5900 to get a hold of Lior. And Severance Pay Calculator, this is a very important tool which we'll get to a little later on in the show. So uh, tell us, Lior, why are we uh, why are we doing the show? Reiterate. Well, we're here to talk about the employment rights that you may not have realized that you had. We're here to educate and inform people about what they need to know if they have have a job, lost their job, are worried about their job, uh, to, to hopefully help solve some problems. Uh, we talk all the time, and I talk all the time in my practice, people that uh, feel that there's no hope, that they faced an issue in the workplace. And let's face it, John, if you have an issue in the workplace, it's going to affect you. A job, our job is a big part of what we do. So uh, if there's a problem and you're being mistreated, something like that happens, it's going to impact your, your life uh, otherwise. So we want to avoid that. We want to help people and let people know that there's things you could do. So if you want to know anything about your legal rights in the workplace, if you're not sure what you're owed, if you lost your job, tune in to us right here every week. We're going to educate and inform and hopefully give people something that they can use uh, when, they, when they work. Help at employmenthour.com is a way to email us. We'll get to some emails later on in the show as well. Uh, we like to do a segment each week as well called The Week That Was, looking back at some cases that have uh, gone through the firm and interesting things that have, uh, people might want to know about, maybe they can relate to as well. What do you got this week? Well, you know, I I'm on TV here once a week. I spend most of my time, John, uh, in my office working with people that have lost their job, working with people that have well, legal issues. So I think it's a good idea to bring up uh, here right on the show some, uh, some matters that have come across my desk because there's important lessons to be learned. And the matter I'll tell you about right now is a perfect example of that. It's an example also of why we do this show. So uh, a gentleman called me. He actually heard our show last week. Uh, and he, he watched our show and, and he learned something. He realized, wait a second, my mom just lost her job. Uh, his mom lost his, her job. She had worked in a small accounting firm for about 14 years. Uh, and she, was, she lost her job without any, uh, any cause. She's older. She's in her 60s. And her son, helping her out, contacted the Ministry of Labor. And he found out that she's owed eight weeks severance. And she was offered 16 weeks severance, so she th he thought that's all she's owed. But he watched our show, and he called me. And he said, Lior, is this actually right? 16 weeks pay is what she's been offered. The Ministry of Labor told me that it's eight weeks. Is there anything else that she's owed here? Well, what I told him, John, is, yeah, she's absolutely owed more compensation. In fact, I assessed her as being owed 12 months pay, 12 months pay. Forget about eight weeks, forget, forget about 16 weeks. So we're talking about significant entitlements here. So he was very surprised, and now I'm going to be working with his mother to make sure that she gets all those entitlements, that she gets everything she's owed. But there's such an important lesson there for our, our viewers here today is that your minimum entitlements when you lose your job are only a small fraction, a small portion of what you're actually owed. Your full entitlements, we'll talk more even later on the show, based on your age, position, length of employment, are significant. And I don't want anyone accepting inadequate severance. People accept inadequate severance every day. That's, there's no excuse for that. So we do the show to inform and educate. So if you lost your job, you give me a call. Go to severancepaycalculator.com. We, uh, we give you a lot of options to get you that information that you need to have. Uh, and again, for this particular lady, that meant for her another nine months pay or so. That's a, a big deal. She's going to have, unfortunately, a difficult time finding another job. So she needs to make sure that she gets everything that she's owed. So if you're watching us right now, you lost your job, you have to get that advice. Please don't contact the Ministry of Labor because they can only advise you about your minimum entitlements. You may have significantly greater entitlements than those, and for that you have to get advice. EmploymentHourTV.ca, uh, where the show's online, and of course, 1 855 821 5900, anytime to get a hold of the OR. Go back just, just for a moment and talk about uh, the, uh, you know, the Labor Board again. It's a knee jerk reaction when people lose their job. That's the first place they go. Why can't they advise properly? Well, not only is it a knee-jerk reaction, they make it easy for you. They give you a 1-800 number to contact right. them. So they, they put up their hands and say, call us. Unfortunately, and this is something that frustrates me to no end, John, is the fact that the Ministry of Labor only advises with respect to minimum entitlements. Right or wrong, they see that as being their sole obligation. But the problem with that is, as I've mentioned, is that individuals have greater entitlements than those minimums. They could be three times, five times, ten times 
those entitlements. So if you contact the Ministry of Labor, you get information that's only partially correct, you rely on that information, that's a problem. So you cannot, you can contact the Ministry of Labor, the Labor Board for other things, vacation pay, overtime issues, etc. You cannot, should not contact the Labor Board, the Ministry of Labor, when it comes to losing your job. For that, you can go to the severance calculator, severancepaycalculator.com, or get some legal advice. 1-855-821-5900 is always the number to call Lior. We'll get to a call right now. You want to call in and have a question answered. Uh, we'll get to it. Antonio's on the line. Now see what Antonio has to say. I have not been dismissed from my employment. I've been at the company for approximately 13 years. It's a small company. It's a construction company. And it was recently officially sold. And I'm just wondering, does my 13-year term still apply in case there is any issues of dismissal? Or is it a brand new start for a new owner of the company? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a great and important question by Antonio. Now, Antonio said he worked for a construction company. Before I actually answer Antonio's specific question, what I have to point out, and a lot of people are going to dro drop their remotes now in shock, and that is when it comes to construction, the same rules apply when it comes to severance. So many people think that if you're working in construction, you don't have severance rights. Not only do you have severance rights, it's the same rights as every other employee. So if you lost your job, you're working in construction, guess what? You have entitlements, you get that's severance, uh, and you should never, ever assume otherwise. But Antonio's question was, well, the business is being sold. I'm going to start working with a new company. What does that mean for my seniority? Well, the general rule, John, is that when a business is sold and you accept the job with the buyer, your seniority carries through. So that means that on day one, you're not a new employee. In fact, you have the full seniority that you had with the previous company. And that's very important because if down the road you lose your job, your severance is going to be based on your full length of service, not just the length of service with this new company. So it's very important to understand that your service doesn't get extinguished just because the business is sold. That said, and this is the last point I'll make on this, is and a, a company can try to eliminate your previous service through an employment agreement. They may want you to sign an employment agreement that says, we're not going to recognize your past service. That is a problem, and you should not sign something like that, certainly not without getting legal advice. But the general rule is, with the sale of a business, the seniority carries through. EmploymentHourTV.ca is the website. Uh, we mentioned it several times. I want to get to it right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com. You've already mentioned the math in your head, how you came up with the right amount. Tell us a little more about it, why it's so important. Well, I'm an employment lawyer, John, so I can provide assessments of entitlements right away. I, I, I can tell people immediately how much they're owed if they lost your job. But everyone should be able to get this information, to have this information, whether they're an employment lawyer or not. So I created the severance calculator. It's a tool that allows anyone to find out how much compensation they're owed. So it's severancepaycalculator.com is the right address to go to. Uh, it's free. It's anonymous. There's no strings attached. It's so simple to use. It takes three seconds. You answer three questions, and you're done. And this is a, a tool that allows you, maybe if you haven't lost your job, but you're worried about losing your job, and you want to know what you would be owed, or maybe you're just curious, or your friend across the street lost your job, you have to tell them to go to severancepaycalculator.com to find out how much they're owed. So let's, for our, our uh, viewers right now, let's run through a scenario. Yep. So let's say I'm an employee that worked in car sales for 14 years, uh, and let's say I am in my uh, 40s, uh, lost my job. Well, first of all, if I had contacted the Ministry of Labor, they would probably call, me, call and say or that eight weeks or so is what I'm owed. Well, John, uh, that's wrong. In fact, as the severance calculator would show, someone in that situation would probably be owed anywhere from 14 to 16 wow. months pay, 14 to 16 months pay. And again, depending on your compensation, that could be well into the six figures. So that's what the severance calculator does. This is just one example. You can use it whether you work there for a week, a month, whether you're old or young, senior position or junior position. Always the first place you go to, severancepaycalculator.com. People are going to run through that right now, and they're going to look at the amount coming out and say, wow, six weeks, six months. Is there a problem with the calculator? That's what they're going to say. Yeah, maybe there's a bug in the system. Right. Maybe it's inaccurate. Maybe I didn't do it right. No. Then the amount that you get there, the figure that you get at the end, whether it tells you you're owed six months severance, 24 months severance, or anything in between, it's accurate. The reason why it's that amount is that's what the law provides, and there's a lot of misconceptions out there when it comes to severance. People think that they only get a week per year of service, maybe two weeks per year of service. Well, I want you to forget about that. None of that is true. None of that is remotely close to being accurate. If you lost your job, you owed a lot more based on those factors age, position, length of employment. 
severancepaycalculator.com. You can also go to wrongfuldismissalquestions.com if you uh, have a question you want answered by a, a lawyer or yourself, Leo, or in the firm. You can do that about severance, your job, workplace rights. You can go to wrongful dismissal, uh, wrongfuldismissalquestions.com. We'll get to one. It says, uh, can I leave my job of 18 years and ask for a severance package? Uh, how much can I ask for? How should I position a question? They won't fire me, but are they making my life miserable? Is that possible? So this is an actual question we had posted on uh, wrongfuldismissalquestions.com. So I'm going to start off with the end. The last comment made in that question is, they're making my life miserable. Well, guess what? If your employer is doing something to make your life miserable, that in the eyes of the law may be considered a termination. We call that a constructive dismissal. So if in fact you can show that your employer is doing something that makes your life miserable, there's a, maybe a poison work environment, then it's not a situation of, of them or you, you're just resigning. They actually may owe you severance as if they let you go. So the first thing I would want to do is, is find out more about how the uh, work environment has become miserable, why this person feels that he does not have a choice but to continue working, because they may be owed severance as a matter of right. Now, that aside, in a situation when there's no constructive dismissal, where you're not being harassed or mistreated, but you still want to leave, the rule generally is that you don't get severance. You only get severance if the company lets you go or if the company doesn't give you a choice but to quit. But if you voluntarily want to resign, you don't get severance. That said, nothing is stopping you from approaching the company, and I've seen that and I've done that in many situations, and say, I want to consider leaving. I'm willing to do this on a mutual basis. Let's talk about a fair separation package. You can engage your employer in a discussion. There's no downside to doing that. And in most cases, the employer may be reasonable and you can work out some, some uh, separation terms that you can live with. But the first question I would have to, for this particular uh, individual is, why do you feel you have to leave? Right. You may be a constructive dismissal. If you're watching us right now and you feel that you've been put in a position where you have to leave, that there's no choice for you but to leave your job, that's a constructive dismissal, or at least it could be. So you have to give me a call and get some advice. Someone's hearing that saying, well, I don't want to approach them and ask. They're going to they're gonna get angry and fire me which is okay because now we're back to a severance package. Right, <laughs> right? yeah. <laughs> if your employer says, well, we know you're thinking about leaving, so we're letting you go, right. that's a termination. You're owed severance. In fact, that, that could be the best case scenario. If you're going to leave anyway, you may as well get severance. Anytime the company lets you go, unless you've done something horrendous, you get severance. doesn't matter what triggered it, you still get severance. Times you should consult an employment lawyer. We'll get to that topic in your phone calls as well. 1-855-821-5900 after a short break right here on the Employment Hour in 30. Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Lost your job? Employment law myth number five. There's no point in calling a lawyer because my employer treated me fairly. Fact. Over 90% of people are offered much less than they are owed. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. 1-855-821-5900. Anytime you want to get a hold of Lior, employmenthourtv.ca as well. We'll get to a call now. This one comes from uh, Maria. Let's have a listen. For the last 19 years, I've been working for one specific company, but for the last three years, I've been on mental disability. A few months ago, my workplace called me and they were suggesting that maybe I could try work and see if I'm even capable to work. I did agree after discussing everything with my doctor. However, when the workplace started looking for placement for me, they couldn't find anything for me and I have been laid off. So I went to see a lawyer and I was told that I was a eligible to receive 10 weeks. I was working in the IT field. I'm 47. Thank you, Maria. What do you think? Wow. So first of all, the important thing to remember is if when you're off on a medical leave, in this case, she was off on a medical leave for a long period of time, that time you're off on a medical leave counts towards your seniority. So even if you've been off for a year or two or three years on a medical leave, if you come back to work, those years that you're off count towards your seniority. Now, if the company won't find a job for you, again, we want to understand why. Do they really have a job, but they, they're not trying hard or they don't want to take you because you are on a medical leave? Because if that's the case, John, that could be a human rights issue. That's illegal. You have to help an individual that has had a medical condition. You have to try to incorporate them back into the workplace. Now, assuming it's a legitimate situation where the company is not avoiding its obligation, but it's, the company simply does not have a job for her, then no, she's owed a lot more than 10 weeks pay. 
uh, and she can use severancepaycalculator.com. But we're going to be looking at probably eight, nine months pay that she may be owed, may, maybe even more. And certainly, if she's still struggling with a medical condition, John, which may impact her ability to find another job, she may even be owed enhanced severance. So please don't sign anything without speaking to me. Don't uh, assume that you're owed uh, nothing else. Uh, and I also want to find out why you don't actually have a job, why, in fact, your employer uh, feels that they cannot accommodate you because they may be a human rights issue. At a minimum, you're owed more severance. Questions, emails, help at employmenthour.com and 1-855-821-5900 to get a hold of Lior. I mentioned before the break, we want to get into this, and that's times you should consult an employment lawyer. Uh, it's basically all the time. <laughs> all the time, job, yes. right? But we'll get to a few of these. Uh, when, you're, uh, when you're dealing with workplace harassment, that's a big one. Well, yeah, workplace harassment. I mean, I, I don't think that you, uh, you're able to turn on the news or open up a newspaper. Yeah, right. Uh, recently and, and not find out or read stories about workplace harassment, workplace uh, issues, bosses mistreating employees or employees mistreating each other. And in my practice, uh, virtually every day I speak with people that are, 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 are victims, if you will, John, of workplace harassment, people that have been mistreated. And it doesn't have to be sexual harassment. It could be other types of non-sexual harassment. Uh, and the law is very clear. An employee should not be the victim, should not be put in a position where they're the victim of workplace harassment. And if you are, if you have been harassed, mistreated, uh, whether it's sexually or otherwise, you have, you have rights and you have options. Uh, one option may be to treat your employment as being terminated. This is what we call a constructive dismissal. You don't have to take uh, being harassed. And if you are put in that situation, you can say, enough is enough. I'm going to leave with severance. There may be other options. There could be human rights options. At a minimum, we may be able to get your company to deal with this issue. Remember, an employer has to take these issues very seriously. That means they have to investigate. They have to take measures to fix the problem. And if they don't, the law does come down fairly hard on uh, employers. So when you're dealing with workplace harassment, don't suffer quietly. In fact, I've seen so many situations, John, where people did not do anything about workplace harassment and it got so bad that now they had to go off on a medical leave. They were suffering from depression and anxiety and insomnia. So it, it impacted their health to the point that they couldn't work. Don't let it get to that. If you're struggling with workplace harassment, uh, we, can, we can fix the problem or get you out of that bad situation. It's so important to get legal advice. Does it change at all if it's, say, a small company and there's no HR department and it's actually the boss who's harassing you? You know, and that is always a question that I get is, well, you know, you're, you tell me to talk to someone, but it's the boss, it's right. the president, it's the owner of the company that's doing the harassing. Well, the reality is, John, if, if it's the boss that's harassing you and there's no one to talk to, then talking to anyone is going to be a waste of time. At that point, we have to deal with it externally. And what I mean is, we may have to just get you out of there with compensation so that you can leave, find another job, or hopefully you're mistreated or not mistreated, treated much better, and get you the compensation that you're owed. So just because there's no one to talk to, just because it's the boss, the owner, the president of the company that's harassing you, does not mean that you're, you're stuck, does not mean you don't have options. There's a lot of options, and it starts by making a call. EmploymentHourTV.ca is the website. When we're uh, not doing the show here, you can go there anytime. Talking about times you should consult an employment lawyer. Next one on the list, this one is completely obvious, but we'll, we'll get to it anyway, and that is when you've been let go. Yeah, but and, and John, that's the big one. Yeah. It is the big one. If you lost your job, it doesn't matter why. It doesn't matter if it's restructuring. It doesn't matter if it's cost cutting. Maybe even you've, did so you've done something wrong. If you lost your job, you have to get legal advice. The law is not simple when it comes to termination of employment. And you have to understand when your entitlements take place, what those entitlements are, and how to pursue them. Uh, there's so much misinformation out there. You can go online. I've seen people getting legal advice uh, about termination of employment in a golf message board. Uh, you know, I, that, that was the genesis for this show. Well, it is, exactly. <laughs> it, exactly. You, you're not going to go to a golf message board if you have a, a, a medical problem and saying, you know, should I be worried about that growth on my back? Right. This, by the same token, you're not going to, or should not go to a message board of any kind if you have a legal problem. So when you lose your job, in many cases, John, in over 90% of cases, when someone loses their job, they're offered completely inadequate severance. And I'm not saying inadequate to the tune of, you know, $1,000 or $2,000. I'm saying inadequate to the tune usually of tens of thousands yeah. of dollars or more. So if you're holding that severance letter in your hand, without even looking at it, John, I can almost assure you that whatever it provides is inadequate. You need to make sure that it's right. Once you've signed off on that severance letter. It's too late to do anything about it. You and I have spoken together with dozens and dozens of people that have contacted me 
after they had signed off on the package when it was too late to do anything about it. So don't let that happen to you. You have to get legal advice. It starts by calling me or going to severancepaycalculator.com. Uh, and in most cases, the good news is, John, that these issues can be resolved very quickly. And that number, by the way, anytime, 1-855-821-5900. We are talking about the times you should be consulting an employment lawyer. This one could be the biggest one. That's if there's uh, situations arise with either a pregnancy or a mat leave. Right? Yeah, and, and you know, we said the previous one was the biggest one. This may yeah. actually be yeah. the biggest one, John. Uh, when it comes to dealing with pregnancy leave, maternity leave, parental leave, the law could not be simpler. And the law simply says is you cannot do anything if you're the employer to an employee because they're pregnant, because they're taking a maternity leave, or because they're coming back from a maternity leave. So you can't discipline them, you can't punish them, you can't threaten them, you can't take away their job, reduce their compensation. I could go on. None of that is allowed. And, and I've seen, and, and you know, by the way, John, this should be obvious. I don't think I should be going on TV to say these things, but the reality is it's not obvious. Every single day I speak with people, with, with women and men have, who have taken parental leave where their boss doesn't want to hire them back, penalizes them. The boss may feel that they're being wronged because this employee has the audacity to take a leave of absence. So let's make it very clear. If you're pregnant, you're taking a parental leave, maternity leave, and your boss does anything to you, anything you have to give me a call we can talk about it the law comes down on employers very hard both human rights legislation employment standards legislation our courts as well uh, and uh, certainly if you're coming back from a mat leave and your employer won't give you your job back or tries to change your job that's illegal give me a call we've been saying this for years on our radio shows across ontario should be a t-shirt don't mess with mama that's well, just the way it on is on a future right? show we'll, we'll make that the t-shirts we'll wear them on the show coffee mugs coffee mugs everything you don't mess with mama talking about the times you should uh, consult an employment lawyer the last one for now before we get into a break and a phone call uh when disability issues arise that's yeah and, and you know this is probably one of the most uh one of the most common top three questions that i get uh, in my office, people call me asking me, I, I need to go on a disability. Can I go? Can my employer punish me? Uh, I'm on disability right now, and they're asking me for all this information. They're asking me for doctor's notes and uh, diagnosis of my condition, or I'm trying to come back from a disability leave. Can they uh, refuse to take me right. back? What are my rights? So these issues come up all the time. And again, the law here is not complicated. If you're sick and the doctor supports your, your sickness and your requirement to take a, a medical leave of absence, you can go on a medical leave of absence and there's no time limit for it doesn't matter sometimes you may need to go off for a day sometimes it could be a year sometimes it could be something different as long as the doctor says you cannot work then you have a right to go off your employer cannot punish you cannot terminate your employment cannot insist on you coming back early uh, and you have the right to your job you continue to be an employee and if your employer does anything at all to you you have to give me a call uh, an employee should have all opportunities to get better to do whatever they need to do in accordance with the doctor's advice to get better and get healthy so they can come back to work and the employer's obligation is to support them in that process. We'll continue with our chat. Times you should be consulting an employment lawyer and more of your phone calls, 1-855-821-5900. Anytime online, employmenthourtv.ca. This is the Employment Hour in 30. Lost your job? Employment law myth number five. There's no point in calling a lawyer because my employer treated me fairly. Fact, over 90% of people are offered much less than they are owed. Always go to employmentlawyer.ca and check with the employment lawyer first. Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Welcome back to the Employment Hour in 30. Your phone calls 1-855-821-5900. You want to get a hold of Lior anytime you can do so. We'll get to a call from uh, Steve. We'll have a listen. I was approached by someone that I used to work for to come to work for him, so I left that position and went to work for him. Due to un unforeseen circumstances, my daughter's been placed in my care, and she's too young to be at home by herself. They've been pretty good helping me with, you know, picking her up and dropping her off at school, but they want me to start work at, like, late in the evening at 5 o'clock at night till 10 or 11 o'clock at night now. I don't know if they're doing it on purpose. If they are, and I say I can't do it, and they fire me, where do I stand with that? 
Appreciate your call, Steve. It's okay. a great, great call by Steve, and it's actually not an uncommon situation. So, so let's make it very clear. An employer has an obligation to provide accommodation under our human rights legislation based on what we call family status. So if there's some family situation that you have that requires you to make some changes to your work schedule, to your work uh, conditions, your employer has to provide that accommodation. It's not up to them to say we don't want to or we're not going to do it. Just like they have to accommodate a medical condition or a religious uh, belief, they have to accommodate you because of certain child care obligations. So your employer can't just say, well, too bad, you have to work these shifts, and those interfere completely with your child care obligations. If, in fact, you've tried to find other child care arrangements and you cannot, and the only way you can meet those child care obligations is through accommodation by your employer, your employer has to do that. So if your employer refuses, Steve, let's talk. Give me a call. Oftentimes, a letter from me, it's all it would take to resolve this, and I'd be more than happy to help you. We're online as well, employmenthourtv.ca, if you want to check that out uh, anytime. We were talking before the phone call, times you should be consulting an employment lawyer. Another one on the list, a big one, is when they change the terms of your employment. That is a huge one, John, and happens all the time. Someone may all of a sudden be demoted, or maybe their job duties have changed. Maybe a work location. You used to work here, now we're going to move you to a different location. So let's make it very clear. An employer does not have the right to make significant unilateral changes to the terms of employment. If an employer does that, the employee has an option to treat that as a constructive dismissal. In other words, they can reject the change, leave, and get their full severance. So the problem is, if you're gonna accept the change, if you're, you're gonna take, you're gonna be a, a good soldier and you'll take that 10% pay cut, the problem by, of doing that, John, is that you've opened the door now. You've arguably given the right to the employer to do it again and again, and today it's 10% pay cut, next month it could be another 10%, and so on and so forth, before there's almost nothing left. So if your employer is going to start messing, so to speak, with the terms of your employment, you might be better off to extract yourself from that workplace, to get your severance and move to a different job. That's why it's so important to contact me, to get some advice when changes happen, not after you have accepted them, before you've accepted them, when you first found out that they're going to happen. one 821 5900 is a way to get a hold of Lior. Talking about times you need to consult an employment lawyer uh, when a case is being you know, built against you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and employers oftentimes we see are, are, try to let someone go for cause, and, and to do that, they often build the case. So we'll, maybe they'll give you bad performance reviews, or maybe they'll give you some discipline, some warning. What they're doing there is they're trying to build up a case, kind of like you build a building. You start with the block and put another block, et cetera, so that at some point, they're going to let you go for cause. So if your employer is doing that, you can't just sit idly by. You have to respond. You have to outline why you disagree with uh, what they've alleged and you have to potentially build your own case. If your employer is saying things that you've done them and, and you don't agree with them, well you can't be silent about that. Let's talk. Let's figure out how we put you in a position where they either won't let you go for cause or if they do let you go for cause, we'll be in the best position to respond and to show that that's not cause. The worst thing you could do, John, if your employer is building a case to let you go, is to just sit idly by. That never works. You have to respond and you should have a written response, right? A rebuttal. If it's not in writing, it doesn't exist. I've said this before, I'll say it again. You have to respond, but also how you respond. It's not enough to say, you guys don't know what you're talking about and, and you're jerks and you're abusing me. That's not gonna carry any favor with anyone. I would do uh, an intelligent response saying, you've said that I've done these things, here's what actually happened, here's what you did not take into consideration. And if you do that, it's going to make it so much more difficult to let, uh, let you go for cause. Another time you should be consulting an employment lawyer when you're put in front of you a new employment agreement to sign. That, uh, so many Careful people don't one, understand, right? John, how important that employment agreement is. And most people, when they're looking at an employment agreement, they look at salary, they look at benefits and bonus. There's other terms in the employment agreement that you have to look out for. There could be a termination clause, something that limits your future severance. Generally speaking, if you're already working for a company and the company comes to you and says, we want you to sign a new employment agreement, that's never good news. Okay, the company is never going to come to you and ask you to sign an employment agreement to provide you with better terms. Favorable to you. Yeah, yeah better than what you had. Yeah. It's going to be better for the company. So if you're going to sign something that's better for the company, you have to understand what you're signing, what you're potentially giving up. So give me a call. You cannot be penalized, you should know, for not signing an employment agreement if you're already working. Uh, that employment agreement, not properly reviewed, and if you don't pay attention to it, could actually come, and, uh, come back and, and haunt you for many years to come. And if you do sign, you should get something for it, right? If you sign an employment agreement, or if you're an existing employee, to make that enforceable and legal, you should be getting something, a signing bonus, a pay increase, a, a promotion, what have you, something that you would not otherwise have, and that makes it legal. 
Help at employmenthour.com, employmenthourtv.ca, and of course, severance pay calculator. You'll want to find out what exactly your severance amount should be. Other than calling Lior, you can use that right away on your tablet or your desktop and get the proper information you need. And finally, the phone call, 1-855-821-5900, anytime. Make that phone call. Keep that number with you. Until next time, Lior. We'll be back. Good for today. Employment Hour in 30. Lost your job? Find out how much severance you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com. Accurate, anonymous, and free. SeverancePayCalculator.com.